You look like a slut. You'll never amount to anything. Your dad's a drunk. These words rang in my ears as a child and made me feel so imperfect on the inside, it triggered a desire in me to appear perfect on the outside. And for many years, I thought being perfect was a great thing. At the age of 16, I had my hair feathered and flipped and my ears pierced. It was the 70s, and everyone wanted to look like Farrah Fawcett. But my teachers saw this, and they saw my effort. They told me I looked like a slut. And this triggered a belief in me that to try and look pretty, and especially if I got attention, must mean that I was a slut. Another role model told me I would never amount to anything. And at that point forward, I was determined to succeed at anything, at any cost. And when the talk around town about my father being a drunk was no longer just gossip, and I thought everyone, everyone knew that my father was an alcoholic, which he was, I began to think, keep everything in and zipped up and perfect to try and control the chaos around me. And when these three events collided, it triggered my desire to be a perfectionist. And the collateral damage was the loss of joy. Hello, I'm Petra Kolber, and I'm a recovering perfectionist. Some see perfection as a driver to their success and in turn their happiness. And for a few, this might be true. But for most of us, perfectionism is actually the roadblock between the life we're living and creating a life of our dreams. The paradox of perfectionism is that unlike living a virtuous life, we strive to be the best that we can be, and we view mistakes as many milestones along the road to our success, perfectionists strive to be flawless, and they see their mistakes as a character flaw. It's not even that they made a mistake, it's that they are the mistake. And even the perfect moments have no joy, because they're never quite perfect enough. To paraphrase my favorite author, Anne Lamott, perfectionism is the voice of the oppressor and it will keep you cramped and insane your entire life. And while not a disease of the body, perfectionism is a cancer of the spirit. And in left unmanaged, it may manifest itself physically. Anxiety, depression, eating disorders, panic, suicidal thoughts. Perfectionism comes in many colors, but it speaks the language of black or white, all or nothing, good or bad, worthy or worthless. And it is fed by shame, the feelings of shame that come from not feeling pretty enough, good enough, smart enough, at work enough, rich enough, at home enough, perfect enough, enough. In 1994, the New York Times listed me as a rising star of fitness. I've been on many DVDs, okay, VHS tapes, and I've starred alongside Body by Jake on television shows. I've worked with George Foreman, Nancy Carrigan, and the incredible Olympian Dara Torres. I've traveled around the world speaking to thousands of people and talked to packed classes in New York City. I've won pretty much every fitness accolade there is to win, and I've even been on the back of a special K cereal box. I share this with you not to brag, but to let you know that even with all of that, this was never enough. Like any disease, perfectionism has many symptoms. And if you're like me, you might not even realize you have this until it's too late. Until you look back and notice all those moments missing joy. You look at your photographs and realize just how many you're not in because you didn't feel quite perfect enough to be in front of the camera. And you look at all those relationships damaged or destroyed because you were too busy being perfect to be present. Like any type A perfectionist, I had many symptoms. I had two eating disorders, not one. I had anorexia and bulimia. And then in my 30s, my symptoms shifted to anxiety, that then grew into full-blown panic attacks. Like any perfectionist, I try to manage my symptoms perfectly. Now, I could hide the tightening of my stomach, my racing heart, the desperate need to get out of a room if I felt a panic attack coming on. I could not hide my last symptom, 
my last symptom was a zero to 60. I mean, not just a lip, not just a brow, full body, head to heel, zero to 60, sweat. In less than 60 seconds, this little body looked like it had run a marathon. It was embarrassing, uncomfortable, and just another public display of how imperfect I was. And after every panic attack, I felt lost, confused, lonely, and even more imperfect. And as my panic attacks became more frequent, my calendar emptied out. For two full years, I turned down high-profile work. The Today Show, The View, the CBS Early News Show, for fear that I wasn't going to be perfect. The only thing I knew during that time that I could do perfectly was have a panic attack. I just never knew when it was going to happen or where. You see, I thought the very thing people expected from a fitness person was perfectionism. And so I thought they expected that of me. But the very thing I thought they wanted was the thing that kept me at an arm's length. Because who can relate to perfection? The pastor, Steve Furtick, tells us that the reason we're struggling so badly with our insecurities is because we're so busy comparing our backstory to everyone else's highlight reel. What would happen if we evolved our thinking and we stopped trying to be perfectionists and as my teacher and thought leader, Tal Ben-Shahar says, become optimalists instead? Now, my idea of an optimalist is someone who learns to live in the gray area of life. They learn from their mistakes and they leave room to grow into a life of their dreams. I also believe that if we stop trying to be perfect, so many of us would get off the sidelines of life and jump in and start living it with both feet and with an open heart. I also believe if we stop thinking about perfection, we can stop some of this hatred this negative talk about others and about ourselves. Because we get to silence that inner critic, that inner judge, and we begin to start living our imperfect lives out loud. Perfectionists look to see how far they have to go. Optimalists look to see how far they've come. Perfectionists go, no but. Optimalists go, yes and. Perfectionists look for what is not working. Optimalists look for what is. And perfectionists are terrified of making a mistake and are so threatened by the success of others. While optimalists view mistakes as proof that they're trying and are inspired and encouraged by others in this world doing great things. I know we cannot connect through this facade called perfection. And I know more than now than ever we are craving connection. But it's in the imperfect moments that our hearts speak to each other and the important lessons are learned. The loss of a loved one, a betrayal, and the ending of what you thought was your forever relationship, an illness, the loss of a job. Such imperfect moments in life but these are the moments, these are the moments we get to reach up and we get to ask for help. We get to dig in and see the depth of our resilience and we get to strengthen our courage muscle. And we also get to stretch the belief and knowledge of just how much we are capable of. And more importantly, we inspire and encourage others to do the same. Perfection would never have allowed me to apply to TEDx. Because the risk of not being accepted would be too big a price to bear. And it would not have allowed me the courage to step on this stage and share my story. But what I know is my imperfect voice and my imperfect story is more powerful than the perfect silence. Was this talk perfect? Probably not. I guarantee I'm going to look back and wish I'd put something in or left something out, and I'm sure I made a mistake or two along the way. But what I do know is that when we face our fear, that's when we become fearless. And as Elizabeth Gilbert reminds us, perfectionism is just fear in really good shoes.
Thank you.